So, uh, a very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Priyanka. I'm a senior research fellow uh, working at ASCII. So, um, uh, on behalf of ASCII, I take uh, opportunity once again to welcome you all and thank you so much for joining us today on a weekend. Uh, so this is our uh, second series of webinar on innovations for use water, water management, uh, decentralized and nature-based solutions. So uh, I think many of you were, had joined our first series, which focused on equity. So uh, the second series focuses on safety. So our aim today is to present low cost, innovative, decentralized and nature-based technology solutions to ensure that used water is safely managed. So I'm very, very pleased to share that we received, uh, next slide, uh, Sayan. Yeah, so we received uh, many uh, registrations from across India and abroad. So more than 25 states uh, we got registration from and around 15 countries uh, we have received uh, registration. So this kind of support and participation is very encouraging and you know it motivates us to uh, organize more such interactive uh, platforms, webinars and we shall be introducing more such innovations and technology solutions in our upcoming series of webinars. So uh, we are very, very glad to have uh, Dr. V. K. Chaurasya sir with us, who is Joint Advisor CPHEO, Maua. And also, uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, accepting our invitation to join the webinar and deliver the keynote address. And we also have with us uh, four innovators who would be uh, sharing their initiatives for uh, 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 use water management. So uh, we also, next slide, Sam. So uh, some clarifications we, before we proceed with the technical sessions. Uh, so PPTs uh, and uh, any other additional materials will be shared with you. Webinar recordings, everything will be shared. And please use a chat option to post, drop in your questions or any, if you want to share your experiences, please use the chat options. And also, uh, uh, if you have any query, uh, use a raise hand option, we will pull you in. So uh, now without any further delay, I would request uh, our center director and uh, our uh, CEO of Wash Innovation Hub, Professor V. Srinivas Chari, sir, to set the context. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Priyanka. So, uh, Sain, if you could give me access, I would appreciate if you, I would like to use, uh, uh, if you could log out and then give me access, I would prefer that. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Priyanka for setting the context. And, uh, first of all, <clears throat> very happy Dipali to all of you. Uh, and thank you very much for taking out your time on a weekend that to Diwali weekend. We didn't want to defer this program because of the deep commitment and uh, uh, I would say importance of this subject. And after Dr. Choresia's confirmation, I said, we shall do it. Because when he is willing to take a, a time out over a weekend, I think it is our responsibility to, to reciprocate and respond to the cause. So uh, friends, <clears throat> uh, you know, this subject of uh, used water management, is a, I think if you do a Google search on used water management, you will not get a definition. In fact, I must compliment and I must thank uh, the ministry for the first time under the guidance, technical guidance of uh, Dr. Chaurasia and colleagues. They coined the word, if you look at the Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0 guidelines, there is a footnote. And they said that henceforth, Waste water management shall be called as used water management in all the communication. I think that's a game changing thought process. If you look at any global definition, you will not find used water management. You may find one water, then you may find new water, but this concept of water, which is used and it requires certain amount of treatment to put it back into the system is something very unique to Swachh Bharat mission 2.0. And I would like to thank, uh, uh, Dr. Chaurasia and the whole ministry for introducing uh, a new narrative for this whole idea of treatment of the 
water that is being used. Now, many of us, just to bring the context and what we're going to discuss today, uh, the context is very simple. We use uh, loads and loads of water, fresh water for bath bathing, for laundry, for washing, for kitchen, floor applications. And also we use it for our own body washing, uh, uh, which gets contaminated with feces, contaminated with urine and any other applications. So the used water is water, that fresh water which gets transformed with certain amount of pollution from a variety of activities that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's the used water. Now, used water, as we call, is unsafe in its current form because it has, it has two components, as we know. One is a black water, which has uh, contamination of feces and uh, anal washings and also uh, you know, urine contamination. And then the gray water, which is coming from kitchen and bathrooms. Now, this water is a concern both from environmental pollution point of view as well as from public health point of view. Now, we need to fix it. One of the smallest components or one of the components of this whole thing is a fecal sludge or septage management. Still, large volume of the used water, you may call it as gray water or you may call it as a cocktail of used water. As you can see on the visual, at the side drain, there's a... This is a used water which is going and polluting the environment, also causing public health. So how do we fix it? What are the solutions? Now, the best part about the used water is it can also be used as a source of water. It is not just a dirty water. It could become a source of water if you can judiciously manage it. And that's the reason we have started this series of dialogues and discussions. Now, there are some fundamental principles that we would like to outline here. And then I invite the uh, keynote speaker and the experts. One is decentralized treatment of used water is advisable because it minimizes the water usage because you don't need that large volume for getting the scouring velocity. The conveyance cost will come down because you don't need a huge pipe infrastructure all the time. And it also reduces energy footprint. And if you decentralize it, at a building level or at a community level or at a city level, as much as possible, it is also amenable for recycling. So the small is beautiful, is very much relevant for used water management because it decentralization is a way forward for dealing with it. Now, all new developments must include water recycling and zero liquid discharge, if we can move in that direction. So we need certain regulations and the technologies and solutions, business models are available. Now, the fresh water intake should be restricted to direct human contact related uses. Only when I consume or when it touches my body, then only the fresh water should be used. For the rest of the applications, the treated used water can be suitably uh, introduced. And for all these uses, adequate treated used water should be used wherever it is technically, economically feasible. And all new community sanitation systems should encourage, must be, uh, must be encouraged to go for recycle of treated water or used water for flushing applications. These are the broad principles. If we adapt these principles, we can achieve water security and we can also improve environmental uh, quality and sustainability. Now, when we deal with used water, we have to deal with a variety of uh, uh, quality parameters. It could be solids, it could be oxygen, it could be nutrients, it could be microbial, it could be inorganics and other characteristics. So when we are dealing with used water management, it is not just about treating superficially, but we need to deal with these contaminants. And then this dealing with these com contaminants is, is, should be aligned with the treatment goals that we have outlined. If you want to discharge into a water body, then we need to meet the NGD norms. But if you want to recycle it for gardening, if you want to recycle it for uh, flushing, you want to recycle it for cooling tower and makeup applications or revenue plantation, then we need to have certain definite standards in place. So far, we don't have great standards in that. We have discharge norms, but recycle norms are still yet to be evolved. I think as part of SBM2, the ecosystem will emerge 
for recycling and reuse over a period of time? I think these questions I would leave it to Dr. Chauras here to address and also guide us. So I discussed about the importance of used water. I discussed about the the usage of used water. I discussed about the characteristics that are pollutants that are there in the used water. And we also discussed about the treatment goals. Now, how do we do it? We need innovations. We need very, very powerful innovations, both on the technology side, as well as the business models. For example, this is one such case where low income housing, we have created a, a, a point of generation treatment system, nothing new, but it, I think it has to be mainstream. A small plant, 750 KL or 300 KLD capacity, but PMAY housing, we designed it and implemented and it's working beautifully. I mean, it's at least, it's it could be inaugurated, but it is test runs are very, very good. Likewise, a hospital which generates about 70 KLD wastewater, used water, gets recycled again through a nature-based solution. Thirdly, I will give you another example. I mean, there are examples available which our speakers will amplify. This is a school where the used water coming out of this school gets recycled. This plant is ready for inauguration and it's getting used for uh, various avenue plantation and other applications. So we have technologies, but we need much more innovative solutions, particularly solutions which are close to nature. And that's what we are trying to do as part of the WASH Innovation Hub. The WASH Innovation Hub is an initiative with government of Telangana and ASCII and other like-minded partners are coming together to incubate these innovations to solve the problems of water, sanitation and hygiene related issues. One such example is used water and today's conversation is about innovations in dealing with this used water management. I welcome to all of you for joining this webinar and this is not a one of its kind. We have a series of webinars to deal with used water management, different technologies, different PPP models, different uh, business models and technical solutions and the idea is to share with practitioners so that they can suitably consider these solutions as a part of their Swachh Bharat mission as well as Amrut mission initiatives. I once again welcome, thank all the speakers and participants and I invite uh, uh, Dr. Chauresia to deliver his keynote address and I will stop the presentation and over to you, sir. Thank you, Professor Chari. I uh, really commend uh, you and your team for starting this citywide inclusive sanitation uh, learning series because uh, this is, we are feeling very much need of time seeing the capacity and priority given to that. So uh, I also uh, uh, would like to uh, greet all the audiences and panelists who have joined uh, in this such a important topic that is uh, government of India has uh, given this top priority. And also uh, I would like to mention that this used water within that used water, this decentralized uh, and nature-based solutions that has been uh, picked up today as a topic. This is really very, very important keeping in view very, very smaller towns and even uh, taking sanitation to uh, close to our residential area where we live. So, <clears throat> sorry, I congratulate uh, uh, your whole team and uh, uh, definitely I will like to see that many more such uh, 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 series comes and many more important topics are covered so as to uh, uh, provide hand holding and knowledge sharing and empowering and capacity building to all people who are involved in this. So uh, again, again, I would like to uh, thank you and uh, here for audiences and uh, panelists, of course, they know much, but for audiences, I would like to mention that government of India is giving a very top priority to this used water management sector. Never before, uh, never before in the country, in one go, all urban local bodies have any program for used water management. Earlier, sometime it was under Amrut, earlier under Jenenwaram also was in limited, but this time taking SBM2 as well as Amrut, all towns are covered and all towns are covered so that used water that has been polluting our environment, water body, even groundwater, and uh, even giving bad name outside the country also because of this pollution, 
these things have been taken on very very top priority and you many of the you may be knowing that during this next five year 21 to 26 some 2 lakh crore rupees has been uh, allocated by center and state for this used water management such a huge investment that can never be uh, imagined earlier five year 10 year uh, ago that such such a uh, good opportune time will come for this used water and uh, as i mentioned under sbm that is for smaller towns less than 1 lakh population some 13 1300 mld uh, this capacity is going to be created that is not a, a small task and there this type of webinars become very very important because they will not earlier you may be knowing that it was only to some large player and other but given the scale of work and other everywhere large player won't go so it is a time that all small player also our startups are who are coming they should be imparted proper capacity building exposure and also what is going on at different level so that they be able to contribute to smaller towns now city sanitation action plans are getting approved some 1000 we have already approved the moment it is going for tendering another you will find uh, there will not be uh, these firms available, enterprises available, agencies available to take up those projects in, in one go. So this is right time. This is we are also doing with the state governments and ASCII and all other agencies, stakeholders who are there. They should carry out such type of webinar so that more and more capacity is available so that within this five year period, that task in the mission mode that is given, we should be able to achieve that as per the, uh, let us say, vision of our honorable prime minister and for the welfare of our people. Here, one thing become very, very important as I- Priyanka, there's a, a voice uh, problem. No, yeah. sir. Yeah. Uh, Priyanka, 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 is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, we are able to hear, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, the earlier I would like to mention whatever approach that has been followed, that was basically more oriented towards larger cities because concentration of population was there and lot of, uh, let us say, sewage was generated and it was polluting and uh, there was the people who were raising vices and that's why uh, even if you see standards, even if you see treatment capacity and all other things, that was all oriented towards larger these cities and larger plants and because of these larger cities uh, uh, larger plants i would like to say the issues like land constraint was there long conveyance of network that issue was always uh, we have been facing because all project even after sanctioning one year two year they were waiting and there was no land available cost was doubling and such type of problem had been there plus the deep excavation of far lane sewer line that has been a big uh, let us say menace i will say and people even opposing that i don't know sewer network and other things plus but please don't put us to the trouble this sort of problem has been there and of course i will say that when we are transporting entire sewage to away from the city then uh, this recycle and reuse also become another cost intensive issue if it is locally available in whatever proportion that can be at least used but when everything is brought out of the city at some quite distance and after that after treatment another another infrastructure is laid to even reuse in the city or maybe sometime outside boundary that also sometimes become a challenge and OEM has always been a problem uh, in earlier approach for larger cities so all these challenges we have to now address under this uh, uh, used water management or let us say our our endeavor towards uh, solving sewage problem in uh, these smaller towns if you see because of the large city approach what i mentioned there has been huge gap as also it was earlier mentioned by uh, professor chari even uh, actual utilization total capacity is only uh, constructed is 44 percent but operational is only 36 percent and if you see actual utilization it is less than 30 percent and meeting now norms almost even less than 20 percent in such a 
challenging case if you see if you only rely on that then things are not going to solve and the solution will become too cost intensive too skilled and such type of even entrepreneur and capacity may not be available in the country and even if they come their charges will be more than double triple compared to locally all entrepreneurs that has coming up and solutions like this decentralized and nature based systems are there so these are the very promising things that is going to solve the problem especially in smaller towns and out skirts of the city and uh, in in this case training people and uh, training entrepreneurs will be uh, let us say much easier compared to uh, that uh, that taking uh, help of only large players similarly standards also we are working at different level all standards have been prepared keeping in view large uh, treatment plants and because of that uh, the problem is there that even whatever the extent of treatment required in many cases we are giving more than that and one single standard is guiding all sectors so in this case uh, right now i will only suggesting that one ready reckoner we have brought there we have given some a uh, clue and over and above i suggest that always be in touch with state pollution control boards explain them and through interaction try to see that for different type of things what level of treatment required they are the best guiding people in the state because they will be ultimately monitoring and doing that so uh, that is regarding standard uh, i will say and later on let us say everybody is aware that what is required and we are working towards it so some more clarity will come at later stage but still because of lack of clarity nothing is going to be stopped things are already many time we have clarified and those things are clear we have to go with the direction of state pollution control boards in case of smaller towns uh, as i mentioned compared to larger one very important approach is needed that is having low capex low opex and low skill requirement unless these three factors are not involved our cities will sometime they get grant from let us say state center they will construct even that uh, uh, highly uh, let us say aeration based plants but when it will come for operation maintenance another constraint we know that is in form of finances with this smaller ulb it is very difficult for them to generate adequate revenue because of many political and social reasons and when we are going to dependent on let us say a uh, central or state fund it may not come timely and the end result will be the city officials will be bypassing that flow that uh, are uh, even the electricity supply will not be there so such type of things we have to take a very conscious decision we are not here to only so case that is yes, very big and high ended plant we are uh, installing our purpose is to solve used water to reasonable level <coughs> so that aspect has to be given thrust not that uh, which type of technology we are selecting problem should be solved that is the one thing that we have to do and in this case another suggestion i would like to mention based on my experience that is under swachh bharat mission learning if you see where we are standing for used water now similar situation was solid waste management processing in 2014 some centralized compost plants other things were there they were designed double triple in capacity uh, waste was not coming it was coming mixed waste then operational cost was high and ultimately it was not like we are bypassing so what we learn under swachh bharat mission we learn that create awareness to people make more entrepreneurs they should come thrust on innovation then wisely in this case let us use water it should not be that uh, indiscriminating and whatever water is coming out that will be fine Uh, this used water and that has to be treated so if we are able to let us say uh, recycle reuse and uh, whatever the minimum uh, water required we are using these all will help to reduce burden on treatment so this sort of approach we have followed under swachh bharat mission uh, 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 one and also under two 
and you will find now a part compared to that centralized plants now even home composting is coming so any cities may some eight to ten percent people are doing home composting even bulk waste generator here also many bulk waste generators are there they can locally treat and do that this will reduce pressure on that so similar sort of approaches we have to build and i request ASCII that learnings of sbm because they have free hand learnings of sbm should be compared here and brought to the uh, let us say a notice of all stakeholders and all those players who are working in this area so that they need not to reinvent on the similar line they should work and it will give confidence and things can be solved used water problem can be solved more efficiently so this is need of the time for this smaller town that we have to go for decentralized even nature based also and also uh, wherever a sure treatment is there uh, for a sure treatment it is very important that stp should be within residential area if it is far away it is nobody baby and even people bypass that doesn't work if it is near that society near that residential area one thing is there that high level of treatment we are going to provide and we are going to operate and maintain and also of course developing more and more entrepreneur is need of our need of time that's why a lot of startups and other things we are supporting and whosoever is coming with new technology we are here to capture that understand and promote all these exercise we are doing here so i think taking these all things it will be helpful that the need of our that is there that is proven technology providers then even easiness in procurement little uh, let us say litigation such type of models you prepare their litigation will be little otherwise with the smaller you will be mostly it will go in litigation and other thing that you people have to think because their capacity is further less and we have also now to develop some model documents where mid term correction and other thing can be taken so that wherever contact is there we should be able to through a mechanism address any dispute rather than fighting and uh, then collapsing those those sort of things should not be there and uh, apart from that the two more important things that i would like to stress here one is sustainability whatever this system is there only alone government funding will not be sufficient so while coming these entrepreneurs when they come out with models they should also work that how it can be reasonably good sustainable at city level with minimal support that is one important thing that will help to these things move and of course this circularity and other art principles should also be built that is going to ultimately take us to uh, our status of a developed country where we want india at 2047 we should be fully developed and in this case this is also one warning i would like to give that uh, now any type of slackness laziness this sort of things are not doing properly our duty it is now being monitored by honorable supreme court and ngt and you might have seen in the past few a few weeks government state of maharashtra has been fined around 10000 crore uh, west bengal some 3000 uh, crore and similarly uh, rajasthan and other states have also been uh, fined for not properly treating used water and others who are left they are also going to be fined so for officials also it is important and those who are going to provide solution they also see that service delivery is maintained and went away and after that it is not working 5 to 10 year oendm is also mandatory and uh, the people who are not seriously working they will also be taken to task these all things shows that government of india state governments ulb courts and even people also now getting more aware and sincere and committed to this uh, waste treatment system or waste treatment management so i request you all to collectively work and i request aski also to come out with similar more programs we will be always available the moment you called me and told that on used water i am going to do not only on the saturday even if you do on monday also i will be available to do that and attend that and interact with our people
so that Thank level you. of commitment we are also having so i wish all the best and uh, my greetings for diwali to all of you each one of you and also for dhan terrace through used water this treatment and circularity i wish that uh, you earn lot of money and other thing this is my prayer and i thank you all thank each and everybody thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you very much uh, <clears throat> dr ray choresia has uh, raised very very important points number 1 uh, there is a, a great allocation of uh, money under swachh bharat mission 2.0 to the extent of 2.5 a uh, times the over and above the swachh bharat mission 1 and part of it is significant part of it is for used water management number 1 the regulatory oversight is getting tighter that is uh, ngt and other uh, you know aspects that he mentioned about ngt fining the respective government different governments for non compliance is also a very important point he mentioned about uh, drawing learnings from swachh bharat mission i think it's very very important point and uh, a significant interesting aspect is uh drawing from the experience of the past he said that we should now go for a long term onm contracts not just creating assets but ensuring that these assets work and for that we need to revisit our onm models i think that's another important point so these are great experiences so our ecosystem is right right now in terms of resources in terms of regulations in terms of standards i think it's time that we bring out the technological innovations business model innovations to the forefront so i now invite mr kamal tiwari who is the ceo of daiki uh, to share his experiences now one point before i ask mr tiwari to speak mr dr chorasia made a very important point drawing experience from solid waste management in the solid waste management rules you have what is called bulk waste uh, definition and regulate uh, regulation for bulk waste generation we need a similar solution and much more profound solution for used water management it is there in some states it is there for higher volumes but it is not there at a, a at a point of generation for a number of applications so daiki through mr kaval timari is going to speak about the experience of what is called a package based solution to deal with the used water management and how can be introduced in indian context what are the experiences and what are the what are the challenges that you are experiencing over to you uh, mr tiwari good afternoon to everyone thank you professor chari uh, for inviting us here and it is always very uh, encouraging and exciting to hear uh, dr chaurasia and it is big task to follow uh, after him to maintain the energy level and the excitement let me try that uh, so yeah can my is my screen visible yes sir Okay. we can see we can see yeah thank you so i present to you jokaso stp which is a jokaso on site and i uh, borrowed this from professor chari and i make that promise that onward i would like to use this word used water instead of waste water treatment plant from japan and uh, we are committed to contribute to swachh bharat uh, mission in india and uh, when you look at let's say a huge uh, kind of a task which we are uh, facing here there where we are talking about treating almost 75 70% over waste water or used water being generated by the country and we are talking about that challenge growing further it is always good to learn from other countries or learn from others how they have done it and japan has a very good case to present if you look at now we look at japan as a good clean environment and country but it was not the same in 60s and 70s japan is the only country probably in the world in as per my knowledge which has faced industrial pollution related diseases and it was a very sorry state of affair then and government decided to deal with the subject in a holistic manner which is basically that because there is a role of each element which is defining law policies defining technologies regulating technologies regulating manufacturing ecosystem and then uh, looking at what will be done at the government of uh, central level and then at the local level how the financing model would work how the migration of technology would happen and skill development and so and so forth everything was uh, planned well and uh, act on jokaso jokaso It just simply means uh, purification tanks or treatment tank so what was done was basically government decided 
in case there is no networked uh, sewer system then only jokaso would be used in japan and it has delivered very well for them now they treat almost over 98 percent of used water and out of that 26 percent is uh, done by jokaso and it has uh, significantly uh, changed the whole scenario you can look at before and after pictures and you can i think picture explains everything i may not uh, use any word it has not only and we please appreciate that it does not only mean that we have taken care of the water and sanitation issue but it also revives the whole economic ecosystem around that area many places have uh, converted from basically a dump yard or let's say a very sorry state of affair to a tourist spot in that country the same can happen in india and this is quick uh, let's say a historical perspective they migrated from it is not a very short or uh, short term project or let's say very uh, rocket science kind of a thing they have migrated from standard collection pit to now completely uh, gray and black water jokaso over so many years and if we compare that to india right now maybe we have mix up everything being used here uh, some places we still use some collection pit but mostly soak pit and septic tank and now because of lifestyle we are using we are uh, generating both gray and black used water so we can directly move to gray and black water treatment rather than going uh, step by step that is opportunity available and we have a lot uh, which we can contribute from our learning from japan so our concept is basically treat at site reuse at site where the water uh, used water is getting generated whether it is in a uh, community level or a household level or a industry or a office that water by after treatment can be reutilized in that area and that uh, saves all uh, hassles which is basically laying off network using extensive energy and everything and it can complement the another point i want to make uh, often i have seen this uh, debate about centralized versus decentralized i feel it is not a debate both systems have to work hand in hand in complement and supplement to each other to solve the problem and that is how it has happened in japan in case of let's say a densely populated metro cities centralized system might be effective but decentralized system can complement it well to enhance the capacity of the system a uh, smaller town where network is not there there is an opportunity to, to look at maybe the whole subject separately and in the remote area where network would be very uh, uh, costly directly we can move to decentralized system and what we have is basically entire treatment scheme is built on inside a product which is a frp tank where the entire treatment scheme is there so though there is hassle of building up bringing various components to the site and then integrating it at site is taken out so it moves from a project concept to a product concept from a manufacturing product and it gives you a scale efficiency and everything and what happens is the way uh, the used water which is generate, getting generated from different applications from kitchen bathroom toilet washing area and uh, other area directly goes to our product and from the product it the water is safe to either to discharge to environment and it can be reused for various applications and there are two standard uh, schemes or models we have various models available which gives you choice uh, uh, based on your requirement of uh, application and also the standard which is applicable you can choose either a very high efficient very high quality system based on jokaso mbr which can give you a bod of 5 uh, from 300 or you can use a standard scheme which can meet ngt requirement or cpcb requirement and these are uh, this is uh, a study was done by iit rurki over a period of one year to look at performance and application of jokaso in india and we can see from the picture it meets all ngt requirement including nitrogen phosphorus control and everything and the quality of water was excellent and it also in, in case of india it is important to look at uh, temperature and uh, other perspectives and we were very happy that it is meeting all our commitment which we are making to the market the other feature is the product is flexible you can install it underground so save on space you can install it over the ground based on requirement of site we have product available for a household which is one kld or going up to let's say a module now with 75 kld and then you can add module together to give you flexibility 
and the area can be used as a car parking or a green cover in case the product is installed underground. So you save on space because the cities also struggle for space, it is very expensive. And based on the uh, use case, which could be, let's say, a hotel or uh, drain or park or anything, and based on your final uh, requirement of the used water, you can choose the application package uh, from the company. And the other important factor is now, if you look at housing projects, we it takes almost five to six years to maybe completely go to 100% occupancy. In conventional approach, we basically install the future capacity today. So we are investing today. And because the waste, the used water is not available at that point of time, system don't work properly because these are biological system and it needs adequate amount of uh, uh, load. But now in the case of Jocaso STP, you can um, migrate and gradually add the capacity as you need. You don't have to invest from the day one. Similarly, it can be, uh, the scheme can be integrated for fecal sludge management by handling the solid first. And finally, making a scheme where you can ultimately get a treated water quality of NGT standard and uh, solid can be used as manure or anything. That system can also be made. Few of cases study for use water. Uh, Delhi Development Authority, we have installed uh, over 50 plants where we are taking water from adjacent uh, drain or sewer line and the water is used for parks and we have seen similar application being used uh, by many other cities and it is uh, one product looks very small capacity but if you look at in totality they are saving millions of liter of water every year. And it is also providing, like Professor Chari mentioned, a very good balanced nutrient to the park and that amount of fresh water also being saved there. Similarly, in Nagpur, what they have done is at the park level, they are using some water for the parks and the rest of the water through a red tanker is used for construction purposes. And uh, this is also doing well for them. Similarly, because the power requirement for Jokaso is very low, you can directly go complete off-grid by having a solar system integrated with Jokaso. So you save on the energy cost. Another example is a basically Professor, interception. You need to wind up a bit. Yeah. Go yeah. To you. yeah. The other example is basically a uh, interception of drain, which can, which is getting into river that also can be treated. This is another example at NTPC campus where they have decentralized even further. Instead of having a large network and maybe a centralized system, they have installed individual unit at individual building and saved on network and cost. And there are different models which we can use. And the other good thing is the sites looks very beautiful. It is installed in front of the reception. And there are various other applications which are applicable. It is being used at logistics park, directly uh, public toilet or uh, for train. And uh, we have been now have over 500 plants installed across India. And yeah, so we started in 2018 by starting our first factory at Wapi, Gujarat in making India. Now we are starting our second factory on 4th of November at uh, Palwal in Haryana. And we are also starting a skill development program, uh, uh, replicating our learning from Japan, where we are going to train the STP operator on Jokaso training. And so we are approaching it in a comprehensive manner. And recently between government of India and government of Japan, there has been an MOC signed to promote the concept of Jokasu in India. So we are moving systematically and we are getting very good response from the market and we are committed to contribute uh, to the cause. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Charu, for your presence. Thank yeah. you so much. <clears throat> so uh, this is fabulous. <clears throat> Uh, just a couple of uh, points before I invite the next speaker. So what you're saying is that uh, like the municipal solid waste management, you can miniaturize it. You can take it to a, a community level, at a cluster level, at a household level, or also at a, a community park level. So this is adaptable to the requirements, right? Are you saying that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, just tell me, uh, you know, these are, this appears to be a little more complex system. What sort of operation and maintenance support you would offer to cities and to other uh, individuals? Because these technologies often perception is that it's uh, nice to install it, but you know, when it comes to maintenance, when it comes to meeting the regulatory requirements, we may find certain challenges. So what sort of support systems uh, 
for not only for skilling but for operation and maintenance that you have in place so there are three four elements to that question one uh, the perception that it is complex the reality it is very simple and it is simplified to the extent that it is converted into a product so user does not need any high grade of skill and this is nothing rocket science it is basically using principle of science and principle of treatment which are followed for ages in uh, large plants converted into a product and uh, there is no expectation of very high skill from the user users intervention on day to day basis is negligible there is no full time operator required at site and with small amount of uh, training user can maintain the plant uh, uh, let's say as uh, even a non skilled person or a very semi skilled person with a training of one or two weeks can handle the regular task on regular basis and there is no additional uh, chemical or biological system which cust uh, customer or user need to handle uh, okay. so that is very simple to operate the other element so is about is, cost. Uh, yeah yeah go ahead yeah so you were talking about cost so if you look at we expect these system to work for 30 40 years not for one or two years okay. it is made out of frp so life of system in japan we have still system working for 50 to 60 years and there is no regular replacement of part or anything so it is actually cost of ownership if you calculate if you look at capex opex and your energy requirement and everything it will be very very competitive to anything else available provided we are comparing to same performance okay yeah. so yeah. just one or two questions uh, yeah. how do you deal with the sludge uh, mr tanmay is asking how do we dispose the sludge what do we do with the sludge number one second question is uh, uh, again mr tanmay is asking how do you handle the shock loads can this system take care of the shock loads yeah so on sludge what we have done is basically the uh, conventional approaches to remove sludge daily basis and handle this sludge so there are sludge handling messy system at site in jokaso system there is no daily sludge handling which is required after 6 to 8 months you can bring in any uh, let's say vacuuming system or sludge uh, removal system like you do for septic tank and it can then go to a centralized treatment facility and after that it is stable and our model is to basically bring in sludge handling system uh, in a cluster form so site does not need any full time sludge handling system unless it is a large site second in oh. terms of shock load it can handle up to two and a half time of shock load and minimum side even if there is a 20% load system would work fine so mr tanmay this uh, the sludge can be taken once in 6 months to a centralized uh, co treatment facility or a fecal sludge septic treatment plant so that's a response now there are certain questions on the costing Uh, Tiwari sir, if you could respond in the chat box. But before that, uh, Mr. Dr. Rohit Kakkar is there. Uh, Rohit Kakkar sir, would you like to ask a question? Uh, thank you, Dr. Chari. And uh, the question which I have, and in fact, that's a uh, doubt which I have been having about uh, the Kasu. Though it's a full-fledged treatment plant for a quite uh, up to secondary level treatment, and it there is. all the components in the treatment train which a normal spp as is supposed to be having at this moment when we start comparing the cost of energy consumption uh, and uh, it's always been uh, maybe uh, today will come to know but we never actually get a actual figure from uh, uh, the dikasu people so can we just come to know because what i i want to just uh, announce and uh, inform uh, in the audience today is that when we talk about a spp a fully fledged spp which goes up to tertiary treatment that is uh, takes care of the nnp also nitrogen and phosphorus also it is expected to consume from 20 to 45 units per annum per capita so that means once it comes to that uh, the consumption per capita per day would be in the range of maybe uh, maybe one tenth of a unit for a large plant and maybe one uh, fourth or one fifth of a unit for a small plant so that is uh, with uh, small means a one a plant which uh, takes care of their own 10 mld plant that would be a smaller plant and once the plant goes above 45 mld they say that the plant is able to even uh, make energy which is uh, you know it becomes energy uh, neut uh, neutral so once we compare with those kind of plants and then you say that we consume less energy what to what extent the casus going to claim to uh, consume lesser energy than a treatment plant 
would it be less than half a unit of a, of energy per day or uh, can can we have some answer on that so tiwari sir uh, keep it brief uh, your response 30 seconds max over to you yeah so uh, sir uh, right now keeping the time in uh, constraint in mind there are two responses i can give you when we talk about i don't think we can compare very large plant and a very small plant there is no adequate comparison but just to give you a reference for a small household plant it is only 200 watt of energy which is required and if you look at a 50 kld system it is 800 watt of energy which is required and that also can move to solar uh, sir thank you more questions so there are quite a few questions uh, tiwari sir you need to uh, go into the q and a as well as in the chat box and please attend to it in the meantime i will also respond to them but please uh, respond to all the questions there are quite a few questions from mr mahender also raised uh, okay. i would uh, request mr mahender to wait for some time we will go to the next speaker and then come back now i invite uh, the next speaker uh, uh, you know right now we discussed about uh, a unit which is at a community level at a building level at a cluster level now there are new generation of technologies which the treated water can be recycled to a great extent i now invite uh, mr rohit kumar ceo of uh, elifo biotech to speak about new gen portable systems and uh, we are very excited about uh, introducing new gen portable system in a community toilet in a public toilet to see if this water can be recycled so we would like to know more about uh, new gen system uh, uh, mr kumar please over to you uh, thank you professor chari uh, it's wonderful to be back in your uh, aski uh, webinar uh, can i share my presentation uh, uh, here can i share my presentation Will that be okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we just had a wonderful presentation by uh, Daiki and Jatasu. Uh, it has been proven for uh, almost more than sixty years uh, of uh, history. It has. but now uh, the system that we are talking about is also a, a largely in fact biological uh, solution we don't combine anaerobic and aerobic system in this this is completely based on anaerobic it doesn't require any kind of a uh, aeration and energy so that's an advantage here so because this session was uh, regarding uh, uh, used water management so uh, i'm just uh, had one slide on uh, different kinds of technologies that are available in, i think everybody knows that there are uh, uh, wasteland there are constructed wasteland there are aquatic treatment systems uh, which uh, uh, suffer from a major problem with respect to size and uh, land available because these systems require a lot of land uh, to construct some of them are very popular like uh, waste stabilization plants are very popular in thailand So, so they are very popular, but uh, they take a lot of uh, space. We have also done uh, several constructed uh, wetlands in the past. We have uh, been in business for the last eight years, so we have done uh, several such construction. If you can see on the uh, right in in the presentation, a picture is there, which is basically an anaerobic digester along with a, a reed bed system, and this is also giving a very good result. Uh, however there is a system where biological uh, uh, treatment system is uh, coupled with membrane filtration and in this system uh, that we have been uh, operating for quite some time now uh, uh, is giving excellent results and basically this is a four stage treatment system there is a, a anaerobic uh, uh, reactor in which uh, entire biological treatment uh, takes place we have ultra filtration membrane of 0.03 micron which don't even let uh, pathogens pass through uh, let alone any solids and other items and then we have a, a separate nutrient capture system which is basically uh, a zeolite a, a kind of a zeolite which captures nitrogen and phosphorus and finally before we release the water in uh, for any reuse or any other purpose 
be electrochlorinated so that there is no uh, pathogens uh, left in the system. So interesting thing about the system that we are talking about, you can see its picture. This, this is kind of a, a containerized portable solution, which uh, can, uh, can vary in size depending on the capacity uh, required. Uh, this can go uh, underground, this can go at the top of the building also depending on the requirement and the land available. So, so these, uh, this kind of a system is very flexible in terms of handling water. Uh, it can take water up, uh, having COD up to 50,000 uh, milligram per liter. This is a kind of a, a fecal sludge, uh, uh, FSTP kind of a load. And, and, and there, it does not uh, really uh, suffer from uh, other uh, conventional problems like we will see in uh, conventional systems where when there is a, a shock load, uh, microbes can wash out. In this system, we don't let microbes to uh, wash out even if there is a large flow of water getting into the, uh, into, into the treatment system because membrane doesn't allow any kind of pathogens to pass through. So it's a closed system. Uh, uh, it continuously increases uh, organic content within the anaerobic reactor, which helps in uh, further treatment of the uh, organic waste. We also have a system uh, play, uh, in place in this where uh, when uh, there is a sludge which gets generated, uh, that sludge can be uh, desludged by simply opening a, opening a tab and which can take it further for a filtration uh, box where, where um, a sand filter actually se segregates uh, water from the uh, sludge and sludge settles on the sand. So this is a complete system where we need not to take out sludge anywhere. It will be deposited in, in, in that box and once in a year it can be taken out, packed in a bag and can be disposed. So th this will be largely a uh, solid sludge after filtration. And, and this, this product did not come uh, in a day. It took several years to develop. It was developed in the University of South Florida. Uh, they did some uh, trials in the labs followed by uh, uh, pilot which were run in Trivandrum for a year and, and uh, another pilot was run in Durban, South Africa, which, which uh, ran for almost two years. So learning from that, has been used in, in the commercial uh, product that currently is running in uh, uh, Delhi, uh, Municipal Corporation of Delhi, and results are excellent. Uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, the input water uh, in the picture in the left, uh, on the left hand side, so water is uh, quite grayish, and when it comes out, it is a very uh, clean water comparable to the portable. Uh, uh, drinking water uh, in terms of uh, looks, not in terms of quality, because you cannot drink it. Uh, but in terms of looks, it appears as if it is as pure as a, a portable drinking water. Uh, and the space that it requires is very small for 100 users. We need only 2 meter by 2.5 meter footprint. Uh, it can treat uh, the waste of 100 uh, users. The energy that it requires is 8 units per day. Uh, and uh, not very skilled operators are required. Even uh, people who have slight knowledge of uh, English and who can actually operate apps on their mobile will be able to operate it without any problem. So, if, so we have noted its performance in past uh, uh, five, six months. So, so this, this is where uh, it actually surprises everybody uh, within our organization also. Uh, if you look at BOD5, the input that we are typically getting is close to 2000 in, in BOD. And the output, uh, we, we, we had two samples uh, three and a half months apart. One was given uh, 4.3 BOD, other was 4.8 BOD, where the NGT norms are uh, 10. If you come uh, down to item number fifth in this list, this total suspended solids, which are in the range of 5,800 is coming down to nine and seven, whereas NGT norms are 20. Similarly, we go to nitrogen phosphorus. Nitrogen has uh, 
uh, almost three, uh, 350 uh, milligram per liter nitrogen was there in the input water and we are getting 4.8 and 7.3 whereas the ngt norms are 10. this is actually a usual trend because we use mr roy uh, you need to move past uh, zeolite in the system okay 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 and then we look at the helmans helmans we actually are able to uh, get zero helmans which are very important for our health similar cases with e coli the ngt says 100 is desirable we are getting less than 20. Uh, so, so, so why uh, this system is uh, interesting is because it is high performance, it can take uh, high uh, quality, uh, it can produce high quality pathogen free uh, uh, water, it can, uh, it is resilient and robust, it can uh, take all kinds of loads, intermittent flows, etc. It is easy to transport, it's, a pack, it's actually a product like uh, uh, Jakasu. It's ex ex exactly a product. It can be monitored through app. In fact, uh, one app, can, uh, a, a municipal officer can actually see in its app which system is operating, what kind of uh, uh, water is being uh, being treated uh, every hour. All those things can uh, can be monitored using app. And if you look at the picture of the bottle, so you can see visually that this is very similar to uh, what you find in your portable drinking water so that's thank you that's so uh, thank you very much uh, mr kumar for uh, sharing this uh, uh, your uh, solution now the couple of uh, questions that came up which are very very important so you mentioned about nature based so number one what is nature based about in this solution number one number two uh, you know uh, you know for a conventional sewage system the inlet characteristics are too high because the sewage may not have that level of uh, high degree what you have presented as input variables, input parameters. Now, the third question is equally important is uh, uh, someone asked, uh, how frequently do you need to replace the membrane? Would you like to respond to these three questions and then we will take up later? Okay. So, uh, typical lifespan of what manufacturers uh, suggest of membrane is three to five years, but we we believe based on our experience that it will be more than five years before we replace this membrane. Uh, input parameters, this is a high strength uh, sludge that we are treating in this. Low strength sludge is even easier. Uh, their membrane replacement uh, period will be even longer because there's not much sludge. And with a uh, smaller size of containers, we will be able to treat higher quantities of uh, uh, lower strength uh, wastewater. Okay. Uh, so what was your first question? I missed. first one was about what is nature based about this? Okay. Okay. But That's interesting is actually because uh, this is a very relevant question because the entire system is uh, nature based. First component anaerobic uh, digester which is uh, based on uh, the biological activity of the anaerobic uh, bacteria, which we typically call uh, uh, anaerobic microbial inoculum. So that's what is uh, generated there. Then when we remove uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, we don't add any chemical to it. It is based on a zeolite, which is a naturally occurring material, which has uh, pores in it, which uh, encourages, encourages nitrates and nitrogen particles to att attach itself with it. And, and, uh, and because there are uh, negatively and positively charged yeah. particles, both of them uh, helps in retaining these nitrogen phosphorus within this system. Interestingly, okay. we can regenerate this geolite by simply running tap water for eight hours and we will get more than 80% recovery of these zeolite. So, okay. which basically, mean, and, and you can capture this tab, uh, this water and use it for plantation purposes. Yeah. So, what you're basically, you're mimicking the nature, but the, the narrative about nature-based solution is slightly different in the country, but never mind. You're actually mimicking the nature to solve the problem of used water management. Now, just tell me, uh, Mr. Kumar, what are the challenges or what support you need for commercializing this solution? And what are the use cases you envisage as as you progress so the question is about what are the use cases and what support you need to commercialize this solution at scale okay so currently uh, 
Sir, can I request you to end uh, the screen share uh, to stop this? Oh, sure. So, uh, see, uh, use cases for this is uh, your all municipal uh, toilet complexes, which are which do not have enough space to uh, treat uh, their waste. Uh, we can use it in schools, uh, any public buildings. Even if it is grey water, it can very well uh, treat grey water. In fact, efficiency of treatment of grey water in our system will be much higher. Uh, the same unit, uh, unit can treat 20 times higher volume because the, 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 the amount of uh, organic matter in the system will be much uh, sure. much lower. So, so, so going uh, by that logic, uh, we can also uh, say if there is an office building uh, where there is a lot of grey water is generated, this new gen system is very, uh, very good in terms of uh, the quality of water it generates. And in terms of expense, o &M, as well as the CapEx, it is comparable to any solution available currently uh, in the country, even if they don't meet NGT norms. We are meeting okay, NGT norms at, at What their support price. you need for commercializing this? What support you need? So, so main support is uh, basically, uh, the municipalities should come uh, forward, have a look at the demos that we are running across the country and, and give us some orders so that we can bring down the cost. It's a new technology. Uh, currently, we are saying we are comparable, but we will uh, be able to bring out that cost from current cost by at, at least 50% what we have currently. For example, we are talking about uh, for treatment of 100 users uh, or maybe... Uh, uh, 1500 users is around 20 to 23 lakh rupees. Now, if we get, say, a, a large order, uh, we will be able to bring it down to maybe 12, 13 lakh rupees. So, the, the okay. economies of scale will start playing in this. Okay. So, that, that's Thank an you advantage. Very much. So you... We will circulate to all the participants the, the pilot locations and the other details so that they can visit or they can experience some of your uh, innovations on the ground so that uh, they can. Uh, you know, seeing is always believing. So thank you very much. I'll come back to you, Mr. Kumar. Now I invite uh, Mr. Ganges Reddy, uh, who is actually deeply committed to the nature-based solution to solving the problem of used water management. In fact, somebody asked, uh, uh, you know, are nature-based solutions, can they meet the discharge norms? Now this question is to Mr. Ganges Reddy. I now invite him to speak about his uh, solution and whether the nature-based solutions are actually, can they work on the ground? and meet the discharge norms. Over to you. Great. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, nature-based solutions have been uh, at work. And we have seen many systems uh, delivering the norms and some systems not being able to deliver the NGT norms. This is surely a design aspect. Uh, if the design is not appropriate and the footprint is compromised without supplementing the necessary biological actions, then the NGT norms will not be met. We have seen this in unteen cases where uh, uh, wetland system would be delivering water which has order, which has color, and BODs are somewhere around 40, 50s. So we have had this experience the moment we brought the system. Usually we have seen about three to four square meters of uh, area is required for a passive wetland system. And if you are reducing that area further, you have to have a supplemental mechanism to meet that reduction in the bacterial activity. So that is a compromise if you make there is a problem otherwise if the system is well designed they do meet and surprisingly we have seen several systems delivering bod4 bod56 without tertiary treatment so let's look at the nature based solutions what they are i mean this is a known story that you know the state of efforts is so much of sewage generated and you know so much vitamin is being treated the challenges are many zara everybody is aware of this the major challenges see with the with the systems are the financial modeling that enough budgets are not allocated for O and M, or contracts are executing are not calculating things that are uh, really required. They go on L1 basis, try to compromise on the pricing to get the standards, and that's where the challenges are coming into not being able to operate the systems. And the number of drives when they are too high, it's going to be a challenge. But you need to have skilled operators to manage that number of drives. 
and we don't have really good training mechanisms in India to train the people for ATP and STP operations. This is a major constraint. Anyway, the known conventional systems are these. Pretty much everybody is aware here. The challenges are these: that constant repairs, still workforce requirement, high energy bills, sludge handling. This sludge handling is a major issue that 90% of the conventional system, wherever you have gone, the screw press doesn't work. The handling of the slurry, you know, water is taken care, but the slurry goes where? It's a big uh, issue. The order noisy, all these things really make the system somewhat you know, challenging for the operators or the owners. Now comes, you know, what are the alternatives? Nature based solutions. The questions that you ask, you know, do they work? Is it possible to go zero power? Do we need the chemicals for treatment? Not necessary. We don't need any chemicals for treatment. When you want to build smart facilities, smarter towns, uh, we need smarter solutions. When you say smart solutions, they must be simple to operate. They must be reliable. They must be consuming minimal resource, whether energy or manpower or any other things. And there cannot be complexities around the system. Then the system becomes smarter that anybody can manage and easily make it work. The wetland systems have been built as passive wetland systems or active wetland systems, bio-augmented wetland systems or aerated wetland system. We have done all three models where we started dosing bacteria to supplement the reduction in the footprint. And that was also not enough because urban spaces are demanding for much, much lesser footprint. Today, we are able to achieve per KLD uh, treatment of a normal sewage up to 250 BOD within one square meter. In some cases where we do certain engineering in the holding tank, we are able to take it even to the 0.8 square meters. So that is the kind of engineering we have done around the nature-based solutions, giving a very slight uh, aeration at the bottom of the wetlands. So uh, when it comes to uh, you know, these systems, they have been working quite well in uh, many continents. In, uh, we have introduced this in India about three years ago. We built more than 20 systems now. Smallest system we built was 2 KLD on aerated wetland, which took about two square meters. The largest system we built was uh, uh, 2.4 MLD, which has been operational for 30 months now. We have taken about uh, 2,000 square meters for a 2.4 MLD uh, aerated wetland. And these are the systems, how they look. These are not parks. These are not landscaped elements. These are purely sewage treatment systems, but they are functioning as a multi-purpose. They are becoming biodiversity hotspots. They are treating the water very effectively. In any of these systems that I'm showing you, we don't have a full-time operator. How it works, this is a simple uh, uh, explanation. You see these tubes and all that, this is the aeration tubes. These are highly configured custom-made aeration tubes with emitters that would work under a two meter of gravel load, water load, and plant biomass without soaking for 30 years. This is how they are designed. These systems do not need any alterations for that life cycle. We calculate the basin size based on the loads, and we design that to last for 25 to 30 years. All bells and whistles are provided to the system in case of something goes wrong. We have mechanisms to suck things out, provide for uh, you know cleaning of this mechanism where you cannot, we don't need to remove the gravel, do this and that. The systems need not be handled that way. So the entire secret is around the hydraulics of the system and the aeration mechanism that is built. The plants we select based on the uh, climatic conditions, the nature of the water based on TDS levels, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of experience is, uh, is not from the books. Most of it is that every project has started something. We have done about 70 implementations in India so far, and our partners have done more than 1300 implementations across the world. So there's a lot of learning that we exchange and you know, it has provided a good amount of uh, base that we did not screw up any project so far. We have struggled with one project. We have taken a food industry where BOD was coming 1000, COD was 3000. We designed the system for about uh, 400 load. That system we struggled for six months, but we finally figured out because pH was going down. So there are different, different challenges there, but we were able to successfully address this issue by bringing in reactive media. And there are many ways to handle nature-based solution with quite a bit of you know uh, engineering ideas. The system looks like this, typical basking chamber, then you have one, one day retention holding tank. This can be altered based on, if you want to go passive, no energy, yes, you need 24 hours. You want to do uh, slight energy, then you can reduce the time. So there is offset between you know uh, aeration and passive systems between the footprint and you know infrastructure requirement. So we typically build at least two basins. So one, uh, if it goes on a maintenance, the second is functional. These are uh, uh, images from 
combined system where a sewer of four sewage of 400 kld and an effluent of 800 kld coming together we have advised them that they wanted the reduced duty so we said combine the sewage it provides for greater treatment efficiencies and it's been working uh, uh, like a magic uh, almost 15 months it's been the system commission water quality is outstanding there are no orders around the system it looks like a park you know people often unless we tell them that this is a treatment system nobody understand that the treatment system typical uh, conventional systems are mm, i mean some other systems look like this more or less some variations can be there and this is the nature based solution like i said the number of drives we have in this nature based solution even though it has aerated com component the number of drives are less the blower runs on uh, automated mode we time it the blower runs only for eight hours and blower capacity is half of any sbr mbbr system so your energy cost is just about 20 percent of any conventional system and the removal of nitrogen total nitrogen ammonical nitrates is phenomenally uh, ahead of any passive wetland that is out there and the good part is that we can deploy these systems for hospital wastewater a very uh, well documented uh, work has been done by mnit jaipur where the antibacterial resistance, you know, what ABR they call in the hospital wastewater due to coming from uh, disposal of antibiotics or through human excreta and pathogens from coming from the blood and sputum all that they are very well handled because of the nature of uh, bacterial, you know, there is a food web within the wetland. There are several different kinds of bacteria that acts on one on uh, another and finally takes care of uh, the treatment in a very effective manner. It is still surprises people, you know, what wetlands can do. Nature-based solutions, this is a very very powerful system uh, we are partners have handled even mining wastewaters you know sewage is a less uh, hassle for wetland systems we can stay today we are treating a dairy wastewater again bod values are 1000 to 1200 and cod are somewhere around 3000 so, you can wrap it up. Yeah. so that's all it is uh, finally when you talk about nature-based solution this is what nature version provides that they contribute significantly towards climate action Reducing the emissions because you're using less power, they act as carbon sinks. They bring that biodiversity into the game and they become biodiversity hotspots. They finally contribute towards the ecosystem restoration. There are different number of projects. Costing wise, you know, uh, it may cost similar to any uh, other system, but certainly 60% cheaper than any conventional mechanical system. When you take life cycle cost, it's just unbelievable uh, how we are spending today. If you're unable to spend, we are actually letting go the things into the environment without treating there are different kinds of images thank you thank you very much uh, mr thank you so you have introduced a very important aspect while looking at choice of technology the life cycle cost has to be considered while making uh, decisions particularly from a practitioner's point of view number one uh, number two you also combined uh, the nature of uh, wetlands and engineered it and combined into an engineered wetland system to reduce the footprint. So tell me one thing, one question. Uh, can this solution be scalable from an apartment block to a city scale? Uh, is it uh, manageable or is it only yep. limited for small applications? No, absolutely. Today we are giving proposals for 10 MLD and uh, the 2.4 MLD that I mentioned earlier, we built it in 35 days. So uh, it is very much scalable. Uh, even this solution, if uh, any one town can be given by the government, we can integrate this with the uh, water bodies within that uh, town and bring out a really a scheme, a kind of a scheme that reduces that city's cost in a longer term significantly. And the okay. power of nature based solution can be really utilized where you are now taking the water from the lakes, diverting the water into STP area, two kilometers, three kilometers, the pipeline cost, and you're setting up a liability to the government the moment you set up a conventional system where it's constantly asking for money. So when you bring any of the water is coming to the lake, so we can handle this water within the lake periphery through wetlands or there are a few other methods that we have where we can solve that problem permanently and make sure the lake survives for a lifetime. When you divert the water, most of the lakes are becoming dry because sure. some water and these are coming together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll come back with some more questions. Uh, friends, you know, uh, we all know that uh, if you look at any city or if you look at, uh, you know, the CPCB reports, there are large number of treatment units, STP, sewage treatment plants, as well as through regulatory uh, compliance requirements, many apartments, many gated communities have built 
lot of decentralized treatment systems. But our experience has shown that many of them do not work. Without naming a city or a state, recently we carried out a survey in one of the states out of 45 STPs, 44 are dysfunctional. Now, the cheapest way to deal with the problem is to make them work. The cheapest way is to get them on board and then maintain them for the next 20, 25 years. Now, it is in this context, I would now invite uh, Mr. Vishal, who is the CEO of the Banka Bayalu, uh, with regard to asking him to speak about how they are looking at what is called urban SaaS model for sewage treatment, sewage treatment as a service. How are you trying to bring, what is the business model and what are your offerings to the sector right now? Over to you, Mr. Vishal. Hi, good evening, everybody. And uh, it's such a pleasure to be part of this uh, session and uh, share some of our learnings from the industry. Thank you, Professor Chari, for inviting me. Uh, can you see my screen, uh, everybody, please? Can you make it a full screen? Yes. Yeah, I will do that. Yeah, yes. Can you see it? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, I will quickly uh, take take you through. So I'll just uh, skip this. So this uh, one picture, and today we heard Mr. Chaurasia and other panelists about how they are proposing uh, their products to treat uh, use water uh, management. That's what they are talking. So here I'm going to talk a little differently and not talk about uh, the product, but the uh, business model. So if you see this uh, chart, uh, and I think it's very clear that there is a huge stress in the country in terms of the water, the fresh water availability, and how uh, it is playing out in southern states and northern state. So just this is one brief, which is uh, from the World Resource Institute. Now, if I, uh, so taking a little bit discussion further, and uh, if I just see uh, we have done uh, some study uh, in uh, Hyderabad through some of the government audits that have been done for the private FST, STPs, as Mr. Chari, Professor Chari already told. So, uh, so just to give you some numbers and to give you the sense what I'm coming to, right? So uh, almost 700 private STPs were uh, audited by a certain set of agencies. And if you see, there are 160 MLD affluent capacity of these 700 uh, STPs. So just to give you the sense, we uh, in, in Hyderabad, we have 18 large centralized STP, which is almost equivalent to what we are talking about decentralized capacity. So we are talking about 160 MLD of capacity of the 700 STP that was looked by the government uh, organization. And uh, around 85 to 90%, they are either defunct or they are inefficiently treating the waste. So as uh, Professor Chari said, out of 45, 44 are defunct. So, so imagine uh, we are talking, we have a capacity of 160 MLD that needs to be treated, which is getting generated from these private communities and it is not getting treated and going in the drain. So end of the day, it is, it is putting a lot of pressure on the centralized STP system or the water bodies. So why this is happening, and we, we heard the panelists, either it is incorrect technology or design and poor ONM. Operation and maintenance, I think in most of 95% cases, operation and maintenance is very poor. And everybody, the society or the commercial complex, they are focusing only low budget. Okay, who is the lowest? They give it to them, whether they do it or no, don't know it, it's not important. So it's like more like a manpower cost. Then what is the impact? Obviously, low availability of water for reuse. So you cannot, uh, all these water which is getting treated, they go for gardening or flushing or the cooling tower. And they don't get, so they end up uh, getting tanker from outside. Huge operation and maintenance cost because every time there is some of the other equipment is under a breakdown state. And huge impact on environment. A lot of discharge is going in the drains. Now, what is the potential that we are talking here? So if we reuse and re an effective treatment, we can protect our water bodies and lakes. So, so our estimate is around 70 to 80 MLD, that is a million liters of uh, per day discharge, is going in these lakes, drains, and water bodies. 
and and there has been a lot of uh, news report if you pull out uh, just see okay contamination of durgam cheru lake in hyderabad you will read hundreds of article talking about how uh, these private uh, fst stps which is uh, you know uh, putting untreated waste in these uh, lakes then obviously second is huge freshwater saving potential by reusing the stp water and uh, then communities can be 50 to 60 percent self-reliant in the uh, water so if they do the water balance because around 50 to 60 percent of their requirement is for flushing gardening cooling tower so if they use their recycled water there automatically the requirement will go down so quickly i will just say now we have seen what is the state in uh, one city which is hyderabad and where we are uh, so we are we as a company we thought how we can really change the business model so in in most of the cases uh, these non functional stps or you know underutilized stps first number one uh, the, the society has no money to really invest in in upgrading this system so we said can we do something about it? so that's the main pain point area second the society has no real onm uh, capability to really run this plan so we said can we really address that so so what we are trying to solve through this model urban sas we have seen sas in the software uh, parlance but i'm i'm bringing this sas in the stp so we are saying urban stp as a service so all urban centers as uh, professor chari and all the panelists been talking about so we are solving the problem of capital we are solving the problem of uh, onm and then obviously doing the re-engineering of these stps and making it uh, run for a long-term uh, service contract so as a as a, a society or an estab establishment which is giving me this contract so they don't have to worry about anything they give me the asset space and I take care of uh, the whole repair. And then we uh, deliver a, a long term commitment of clean water for seven years, 10 years, depending upon how they want to do the contract. So that is the model we are talking. So uh, very, very quickly about the model. Uh, so uh, obviously long term service contract, we have seen service con uh, service structure in, uh, uh, in road roads. We have seen we have seen in solar. We have seen in a lot of municipal water, all of that has happened at a very bigger level. Now we are bringing it down to the urban center, but the problem is same. It is not like any less compared to a larger uh, road contracts or uh, solar or others. So obviously re-engineering, we will do it and we, we will have hundred percent responsibility of operation and maintenance and predictable long-term cost for the establishment. Now, I, when, when we fix a cost today, it's not going to change because it's 100% responsibility for me to run the show. Now, coming to how it works is like, obviously, we do the, uh, you know, analysis of the system, technology selected. And for the, uh, for the uh, group, uh, we normally prefer to go with MBR because MBR gives more predictable. First, number one, uh, number uh, so the quality of treatment from MBR is very good. Second, uh, in terms of space requirement, because these are systems which are already available on site. So doing civil uh, uh, changes or uh, civil, uh, uh, ch uh, you know, uh, creating a new tank or all, it's not possible. So MBR we have selected uh, and it works well. <coughs> and then uh, execution, we try to finish this in uh, 100 days. And I'll show you one quick case study. And client pays predetermined monthly EMI. Now, quickly in terms of cost split, uh, just for the, uh, the for the team here. So uh, mostly everything is paid by the developer. Here, developer is our company, and uh, the energy cost is to be uh, the asset owner or the any society. So in terms of lease period, could be seven to ten years, and we can also look for a longer time. And it could be a KL base. So how much they are uh, using every day, uh, they can pay us on that, or we can do a fixed fee <coughs> and escalation and timeline. These are standard uh, thing. One quick uh, uh, case study. So we had this uh, one uh, plant uh, which was 1500 KLD RMBR system was there, which we converted to 1200 KLD MBR. And uh, so I'll quickly see, show you how we had done this. So you can see the footprint and somebody told about how much space is required. So you can see uh, this 1200 KLD plant is done in 350 square meter with the tank obviously underground. So this we have even given a space out to my uh, client almost more than 100 uh, square meter we gave it away so the the so that is already been uh, footprint has been saved 
and uh, and you can see that we have already treated like more than 230 million liter of water in the last eight months and almost 1100 uh, kiloliter we are uh, treating every day depending upon how much is the input from the society so you can see this plant how 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 it looks this is the old one and uh, this is the new plant mr vishal so, ji yeah yeah rapid yeah this is the last slide so just last slide you can see the quality of water uh in the in the in, in this chart and uh, yeah th that's about it thank you thank you yeah you can take out the <clears throat> presentation yeah <clears throat> stop thank you very much uh, this is very very fascinating uh, you know just outline the importance of urban saas model you know nowadays we don't buy a computer server earlier we used to have a big server for operating our internal systems now we buy what is called a service from a cloud so urban saas is actually doing a similar model where if you have a defunct or suboptimal stp which most of our urban areas have and if you want to meet the requirements if you want to upgrade them and meet the requirements the urban saas model through this company can redesign it if possible finance it operate it for a long period bring it to the ngt norms and then you can pay them on a per kiloliter basis vishal ji am i saying correctly absolutely right sir absolutely this is correct. not only applicable for city infrastructure even if there are some builders developers where this stps are suboptimally utilized you are not meeting the environmental norms or some of your machinery is dated they can evaluate the system upgrade it and then bring it to a, a, a top end system so this is a new generation of models and business models and services that indian entrepreneurs are coming up with and i would like to compliment all of you for doing this this is phenomenal and i think these ideas and innovative practices are really going to solve the problems of uh, what we have what is called used water management and that's what i think is a model or the solution these technical as well as business model solutions will help us to meet the swachh bharat mission objectives of uh, sbm 2.0 now there are quite a few questions uh, any questions before i uh, open up chorasia uh, sir any any quick word any 30 second response from you sir i am really very much happy to see especially this urban saas concept because many of them in societies that is lying defunct and even a contract is very much important but because as you mentioned out of 45 44 is defunct so such type of remedy should be there hand holding should be there so this is one way first three presenters they are giving that technological solution but after that this one is a new dimension that is coming and this sort of evolution innovation is required for the sector so uh, all the best from my side and i would like to see their presentation and further details that how yeah. much cost per kiloliter and other things are coming so we will yeah. take it forward everybody we assure will take it forward Thank, thank you thank you, you sir. sir thank you so uh, dr malni i see your uh, uh, you you put it the chat box over to you dr malni you can open up your speaker and then now uh, you okay over to you thank you very much uh, thank you to ask it team for organizing uh, yet another uh, compelling uh, seminar and thank you to all the speakers um, i have one uh, question uh, to all the uh, uh, technology uh providers uh, i'm just curious uh, uh you know particularly given the saas model and given the low onm of the nature based uh, solutions uh, that were discussed and spoken i'm just wondering what percentage of your projects that you've implement implemented so far would have been in urban slums um i mean ultimately uh there are many business models uh, and funding also this is also to chorasia ji uh, just curious that if uh, a city wants to have nature based solutions implemented in say 20 of its slums uh, where do they go for funding and how what kind of a business model will work out for the 
uh, the private sector players. So, Rohit ji, would you like to go for it because you are currently implementing in one of my slum? Over to you. Uh, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> I think SaaS model for slums. Uh, uh, probably some CS CSR activity or government institutions will have to take uh, that responsibility to pay uh, uh, in uh, SaaS model. Uh, otherwise, uh, slum dwellers uh, will not be in a position to pay for uh, these services. Another way is by keeping cost uh, of the product as low as possible, making it as cheap as possible. So the, uh, and maybe uh, some kind of a, uh, because, because this is a product and this is a, uh, entire system is, uh, is, is actually a business. It's not uh, really a, a, a free service. So, so it's important to uh, ensure that uh, the technology developers and product providers uh, get paid for uh, the services or the product that they are providing. Uh, okay. So, so, so uh, yeah. So, I mean, as a company, you can't offer uh, a complete free solution, no doubt about it. But in response to Dr. Manley's question, Chore says, sir, can the city governments post projects like this for improving the slum areas under SBM 2.0? Can you give a 30 second response? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Normally, uh, individually selected one, uh, let us say slum, we don't encourage. Adjoining that area is also there. That is uh, definitely wonderful. But if all other areas are covered and only that slum is somehow left or later on developed, then they can take up and we are ready to support that if it is a, if it is a fill gap arrangement. But uh, only picking up all living aside and picking only some slum and doing that sort of uh, pick and choose sort of things we don't support. So the piecemeal approach is not a great thing, but I feel, as long as it fits into a, a citywide approach where slums are also integrated as a part of the citywide plan, probably that would be the way forward as per uh, Dr. Chauri said. Dr. Mali, is that uh, close to a good response for you? No, sir. I'm sorry. But yeah, uh, the, the fact of the day is that if we want to take a pro poor lens, then it is a piecemeal approach which is required. For example, the two KLD plant which was presented by Mr. Reddy, those are the kind of systems that we need implemented in each of the slums individually because all the systems and all the funding is going for centralized uh, systems or the treatment is going somewhere away while people in the slums are living in the muck day in and day out. So I think it's important that collectively we look at business models which can be implemented in a piecemeal in the slums. Uh, but that's with a, a, with that's a larger plan, I hope. Yeah. With a larger Sorry, plan, but it can be taken up on It may connect space. to the larger plan, but oftentimes it's not possible to connect them as well. Okay. So uh, even the systems that we are talking about is so for what you are saying is you need to prioritize. Department. Yeah, what you are saying that's is you need to prioritize, but we can. Yeah. Uh, that's how I would like to add under Swachh Bharat Mission or even under Amrut now ministry has taken a very conscious decision and a forceful one that all sewage management projects are used water management projects. They will be on citywide plan basis only. So they have to make a plan even that futuristic also and uh, current requirement also. Then whatever assets are there, if they are functional, whatever gaps are there, they have to identify and do. But if a city go, city government is coming only to pick up, this is the slum and leaving all other people um, to further become slum, uh, slum-like situation, that is not acceptable. If yeah. they come together, that is fine. If some gap is there, we are ready to support. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Uh, Mr. Mangesh, over to you. Uh, hi, so thank you so much. And it's really wonderful to see how the things are growing. Uh, the technology, data, uh, the technology, both from the process perspective as well as data and digital technology. This is something which is uh, not exactly a question, but a uh, food for thought for all our uh, all of us in a way that uh, gradually, while we speak of public procurement or even the private procurement of various innovative technologies, the buyer needs to have more confidence. And as I see that there's a great deal of data that is being uh, getting accumulated about the performance of the systems. So in a way, what we may need possibly in future is a statistical quality control, SQC or SQA, 
and with these kind of innovators in place with highest abilities in digital as well as process technologies i think that's the, uh, that is that seems to be a future so i'll be happy to collaborate with any of the innovators for that as well as with aski and we can take it further in the next uh, few sessions yeah. thank you thank you so uh, i would like to pull in mr mahender uh, mahender are you there by any chance yeah um good yeah. evening chari guru so good evening good evening so you had one question but before you ask a question i would like to ask you know the sustainability of all these interventions uh, can only be achieved if you monitor on a regular basis and if possible on a real time basis now you been exactly. championing the cause of real time monitoring would you like to speak a bit about it yeah sure in fact uh, thank you for the opportunity we have visited these fstps and uh, we have observed their that uh, even at the uh, time of collection uh, the kind of uh, uh, readings that we are taking especially for ph tds and uh, the temperature um, uh, the these apparatus are not uh, you know uh, not feasible uh, in the long run and uh, they have been using it from uh, almost one year plus so the data is not accurate one two uh, after treated so Uh, still this water is now uh, going for the landscape uh, purpose it is not been uh, pumped in for reusability because uh, i think there are apprehensions from uh, the uh, industries uh, where you are trying to promote this for reusability even in that scenario if we can give them this real time monitoring about how the quality is after treatment so, so is you no know, that's fine but real time monitoring is perceived to be very very expensive so what is your advice to us is it affordable because we are creating lot of assets can real time monitoring is feasible can it be implemented in our used water management treatment systems okay uh, see uh, if we if we look at this at a, as a silo definitely it looks to be a very costly affair but thing is um, when you are observing the overall solution uh, when when you when you look at the overall solution and uh, the kind of objective that you have in order to bring uh, or to make this uh, solution as a successful one in such scenario uh, this real time monitoring is in fact is helping uh, to the overall cause so okay. uh, so and and uh, this this cost is also in comparison with your overall project cost if you see it it is not even 1% of okay. your overall project cost that's that's very very powerful statement because if uh, the cost of inaction where the asset is much more expensive than not investing in this 1% of the monitoring cost i think mahinder made a very very strong point that it is worth investing in real time monitoring to make these assets workable and otherwise these assets could become potentially become liability in the future uh, mr vishal your hand is up would you like to respond or would you like to add anything yeah yeah i would like to respond to mahinder ji uh, uh, so actually we are using real time monitoring for all our plants and i agree that there is a cost angle to it but we are also working on a opex model where the we need not pay the upfront cost of these real time monitoring systems and i complete i completely second what professor chari is selling uh, we have implemented these uh, online monitoring and we can see a uh, ph tds uh, all of these parameter which is important for a wastewater treatment plant and and we have seen uh, you know because we are showing this to the client they they have confidence in the quality of treated water that we are supplying to them and and as i told you like i already 250 million we have treated in one one plant alone for last 7 8 months and we have such four such plants are there so you can imagine we have treated more than half a billion liter of water in 7 8 months and 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 there is a proof that they are reusing for their application it it is it, it's 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 a uh, you know less said you know than like actually it is in action and and all of these we have a real time monitoring so uh coming back uh, to uh, the real time monitoring which is important and uh, it helps us do a preventive maintenance of our plant so every 
uh, uh, two three uh, weeks we do a preventive maintenance because once we see the parameter a little bit out of range or whatever so we know something is not yeah. right so so it's important for a long term thank you Vishalji. i yeah. think you, you made a brilliant point it's not just for monitoring for compliance point of view i think it's equally important to raise the confidence of the community that uh, by showing the result that they are really tracking and monitoring and meeting the requirement i think the overall uh, i would say the mood of the situation will improve so the monitoring will give a lot of confidence to all the stakeholders including the owners of these properties and builders when they see that their wastewater is getting uh, <clears throat> treated to the desired level i think their willingness to pay will also increase thank you very much for bringing that point so i think uh, this is wonderful we have exceeded the uh, time by almost 20 30 minutes now so uh, i thank all the panelists i thank uh, dr charesia i thank uh, uh, dr rohit kakkar and all the panelists for taking out time for joining us uh, uh, dr priyanka over to you any last suggestions all this data will be shared with all of you the ppts will be shared with all of you the summary proceedings will be shared with all of you and the contact details will be shared with all of you so that you can start networking with the innovators start interacting with them start initiating pilots and i hope you take uh, uh, some of these projects forward of course under the overall uh, you know the mission of swachh bharat mission 2.0 thank you very much dr priyanka over to you and also with everything we will also share the uh, date of our next webinar series soon so thank okay. you so much thank you charasya sir and all the Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for thank you, uh, thank you all the ASCII sessions. team members. Happy thank Diwali you. to all of you. Happy Bye -bye. Diwali thank to you. all. Thank you. Happy, Happy Diwali. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.